Hey everybody, this is Rykard here again, and welcome to another Pokemon X and Y analysis video. Today's video is going to be all about Aegislash, so let's get started by taking a look at this Pokemon's typing, abilities, and stats. So to start things off, Aegislash is a Steel Ghost type Pokemon introduced into Generation 6, and the first Pokemon that possesses this extremely awesome and unique typing that gives you three immunities, a ton of resistances, and only four weaknesses, which are to Ghost, Dark, fire, and ground type attacks. As for its ability though, it is an ability unique to Aegislash, which is known as Stance Change, and this will change up its form throughout battle depending on the types of moves that you go for. Now you will always start out the battle in Shield form, and when you switch out, even if you are in Blade form switching out, you will come back in in Shield form. And the way you switch stances is through the use of certain moves. Any damaging attacking move, such as Iron Head, will turn you into the Blade form, Whereas, going for King's Shield after you are in Blade Form will bring you back into Shield Form, and that is the only way you can switch out uh, forms. There is no other way of getting back into Shield Form other than going for King's Shield. However, any attacking move will bring you into Blade Form and keep you there as long as you don't go for King's Shield. As for its forms, though, each one has different base stats, but the ones to keep in mind that do stay the same are its base 60 HP and base 60 Speed. As for the shield form base stats, it will have base 50 physical attack and base 50 special attack, but base 150 defense and base 150 special defense, meaning that it is the more defensive of the two forms. Whereas blade form will have quite the opposite, with base 150 physical attack and 150 special attack, with base 50 defense and base 50 special defense, which is obviously the more offensive variant. So making use of both of these forms in battle is one of the keys to making use of Aegislash's full potential, and de definitely something that allows this Pokemon to be quite the difficult Pokemon to deal with, especially because of how good its defense stats are, and how these stats alone allow it to set up extremely easily if you are given an opportunity to, and then switching into Blade Form, you are able to essentially sweep your team fairly easily if your opponent does not really have anything to counter it, after it's set up. So that is something to keep in mind. It is not uh, it is not overpowered, at least in my opinion. It's just a difficult Pokemon to deal with. And there is quite a bit of discussion about this Pokemon being uber already, when I think we just need to give it time for people to develop counters to this Pokemon, as it's really not that amazing and unbeatable as people think it is. It's a great Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but you need to stop complaining about it being overpowered, as the games have been out for literally like two months at this point, maybe even less. Uh, but with that, let's get into the sets for this video. So this first set is going to start off by giving Aegislash an Adamant Nature to increase its physical attack but lower its special attack, and for the ability, we're going to be going with Stance Change. As for the EVs, we're going to put 252 into its HP to max that out, 252 into its physical attack to max that out as well, and then the remainder 4 EVs into its special defense so that its special defense is 1 point higher than its physical defense, which will kind of mess with download Pokemon more or less. As for the item though, we're going to be going with either Leftovers to increase our HP at the end of every turn, or an Air Balloon to, to turn our ground type weakness into a ground type immunity until the balloon is popped, which is very beneficial on a set like this because it will allow us to set up with this Pokemon a lot easier now that we have one less type that we are weak to. As for the moves though, and the setup move of the set, we're going to be going with Swords Dance as a way to boost Aegislash's physical attack by two stages every time you go for it. And because your defenses are so great naturally in the shield form, you are almost guaranteed to get up a Swords Dance even against something that has a super effective attack against you, which is crazy thinking about it. But once you have set up sufficiently, you may even get the chance to set up two Swords Dances. I've definitely been able to do that myself with Aegislash. The first move that we're going to be making use of on the set is going to be Shadow Sneak, which will be your main ghost type attack on the set. It has priority, meaning that you'll be able to attack more or attack before your opponent is able to, and it's just a really solid type of attack because ghost types are no longer resisted by steels, meaning that there are only two types in the game that resist ghost type moves, which are normal types and dark types. Before there's normal and dark type Pokemon, we actually have Sacred Sword on the set as well to be our fighting type attack, which will obviously hit both of those types I just mentioned super effectively, as well as a few others. And ghost fighting is possibly one of the best type coverages in the game that you could possibly get. And then for your last move slot, you could either go with King's Shield as a way to get back into your shield form and possibly cripple a physical attacker as 
King Shield has the added effect of lowering an opponent's physical attack by two stages if they attack you with a contact move. However, keep in mind that King Shield does not protect against status moves like Will O Wisp, like the actual protect move does. So that's just something to keep in mind. But this will allow you to switch back into your shield form as well as possible cripple a physical attacker. Or you could go with Iron Head for another attack on the set. It'll be your secondary stab and will give you some extra coverage against something that Shadow Sneak obviously will not be hitting that hard or Sacred Sword will not be hitting that hard for either because it's not stab. So that's a possible other option on the set if you so desire to. But overall, this is probably the most commonly seen Aegis Slash set that you've been seeing going around at this point in time. As for this next set, we're going to be turning Age Slash into a speedy attacker. So we're going to start with a Jolly Nature to increase its speed but lower its special attack. And for the ability, we're going to be doing with Stance Change again, obviously. As for the EVs this time, though, we're going to put 252 into its physical attack, 4 into its special defense, and then 252 EVs into its speed to give it its max physical attack and max speed possible. And as for the item, there are three pretty awesome options to use on the set. The first being a Life Orb, which will obviously increase the damage of all of your attacks while giving you a 10% recoil with every attack that you go for. But we could also go with Weakness Policy, which is a new item that basically boosts your physical and special attack by two stages when you are hit by an attack that is super effective against you. And because Aegis Slash has such amazing bulk when it's in shield form, even with no investment, you will more often than not be able to take a super effective hit, get to plus two in both of your attacks, while also using the setup move of the set to turn Aegis Slash into quite the monstrous attacker and problem for your opponent. But we can also again go with an air balloon as a way to be immune to ground type moves and make our setup a little bit easier. But as for the moves on the set, since this is the speedier version of the previous set, we're going to be going with Auto Demise, which is going to be increasing our speed by two stages every time we go with it, go for it, while also reducing our weight, but that's not really that big of a deal for this guy. Um, but we are also then going to be making use of Shadow Claw as your main Ghost type move on this set, and then Iron Head as well as your main Steel type move on the set, with the coverage that Sacred Sword provides, which will essentially give you the ability to hit everything in the game for neutral damage, at least, and many things for super effective damage. But overall, this set is quite the different way to use Aegis Slash just because the Swords Dance Shadow Sneak sets are so common. Um, so it's kind of cool to try and boost this Pokemon's speed instead, which I think is a lot of fun and can definitely do some damage if you are using Weakness Policy and take a super effective hit to increase your attack and then be increasing your speed with Auto Demise. So that's a really cool way to possibly use this with a speed boosting set. As for this next set, it is the mixed version of the previous one you just saw, so we're going to start by giving Aegis Slash a hasty nature to increase its speed but lower its physical defense, and then we're going to be going with stance change. As for the EVs, we're going to put 4 into its physical attack, 252 into its special attack to max that out, and then 252 EVs into its speed to max its speed. And then for the item, again, we are going to be choosing between a life orb, weakness policy, or an air balloon. A weakness policy also has a fantastic use on the set because this is a more mixed set, so we will be using both special and physical attacking moves, which will significantly benefit from the boost that weakness policy provides. As for those moves then, again, we are going to be boosting our speed by two stages through the use of Autonomize, but because this is a special set, we are going to be using Shadow Ball as our main ghost type attacking move on the set. And this is fantastic mainly because everyone pretty much always expects a physical Aegislash. So the fact that you're even just running a uh, special move anyway is just going to take your opponent by surprise in all honesty. But to go along with that, we're again going to be using another Steel type stab attack, which will come in the form of Flash Cannon this time, which will be obviously doing some great damage from the Steel type perspective. And then our last move on the set is again going to be Sacred Sword as the coverage that you get with this move along with Shadow Ball is absolutely amazing. It is also important to point out that some of the bulkiest special walls in this or in the game will be unable to deal with Sacred Sword, namely Blissey, because you are actually able to two-shot Blissey with Sacred Sword if you are using the Life Orb set, even though we aren't really putting any EVs into its physical attack just because of how naturally powerful Aegis Slash is. So this set is quite different than the previous one, in the sense that it does have some special attacking moves, but this could also lend it to be very surprising for your opponent, as you will take them off guard, more often than not, and be hurting them on their specially defensive side as opposed to the physical side that they would normally be expecting. Up next, I have a interesting set submitted to me by a subscriber by the name of Bradflix. So we're going to start by giving this Aegis Slash a quiet nature to increase its special attack but lower its speed, 
and for the ability, we're going to be going a stand stage. As for the EVs, we're going to be putting 252 into its HP to max that out, 252 into its special attack to max that out as well, and then putting the remainder 4 EVs into its special defense just to give it one more into that stat to mess with download users. And as for the IVs, we're actually going to drop its speed IV all the way to zero, which will effectively make Aegislash as slow as it possibly can be, which will allow it to then stance change more often than not after your opponent attacks, thus allowing you to keep your good defenses when you take the hit, and then switch into the blade form to allow you to dish out some really heavy damage. And for the item, we're going to be going with leftovers to recover a little bit of HP at the end of every turn. As for the moves though, the first one we're going to go with on this set is going to be King's Shield as a way to protect ourselves from any attacks that are damaging as opposed to the non-damaging attacks that King's Shield does not protect us from, and also possibly cripple a physical attacker if they try to use a contact move against you. But the main use of this set over the other ones is through the use of Substitute. Now, if you are a Pokemon with fantastic immunities and fantastic typing and a very threatening presence just in general being on an opponent's team, have or being on your own team for that matter, um, having substitute just in general will scare the crap out of your opponents because once you have set up a sub, they're going to have to try to figure out how to break that thing without taking massive damage in the process. So once you have set up the sub, then you are free to basically go with Shadow Ball and Sacred Sword as your main attacks on the set. Again, Shadow Ball is there because it's a special attack where most, most people are basically going to be expecting you to go for physical moves, so when you hit them with this and you hit their physical walls with Shadow Ball, they will take quite a bit of damage, which will then surprise the crap out of them. But since this also has some mixed capabilities because of Aegislash's great physical attack, even when you're not investing into it because it's base 150 in blade form, you can also make use of Sacred Sword very effectively on this set no matter what, which is absolutely fantastic. So this set in itself is just really threatening and difficult for your opponent to deal with, and my subscriber that mentioned this said that this is possibly one of the best sets that he's come up with for this Pokemon that isn't a boosting set. It just basically is able to take something out because of Substitute, and that's just something really awesome to think about. As for this last set, it is going to be a defensive set for this Pokemon, because while its offensive capabilities are amazing, its defensive ones are really great as well, so we might as well try to make a set that makes use of that. So we're going to start this one off by giving Aegislash a careful nature to increase its special defense, but lower its special attack, and for the ability, we're going to be going with stance change. As for the EVs, we're going to put 240 into its HP, 252 into its special defense to max that out, and then the remainder 16 EVs into its speed to give it a little bit more speed, enough to outspeed base 60 Pokemon like itself. And as for the item on the set, we are going to be going with Leftovers to recover a little bit of HP at the end of every turn, as this is a more defensive set, so we're going to want to keep our HP up. But as for the moves, the first one we're going to make use of is King's Shield, which is pretty standard on most defensive Aegislashes as far as I'm concerned, and really great because we're maxing our special defense, and King's Shield has a chance to possibly lower your opponent's physical attack by two stages if they attack you with a contact move, like I've said before. But for your main ghost type move on the set, you could either go with Shadow Claw or Shadow Sneak. And the option is there mainly because if you do go with Shadow Sneak and you fail to KO your opponent if they're within KO range and you just fall short of it or something like that, you are now going to be completely exposed to an attack from your opponent that will most likely kill you because your defenses are really bad when you're in uh, blade form. But if you go with Shadow Claw, you will most likely attack after your opponent goes first, meaning you will take the hit in shield form and then attack with a even stronger ghost type move in the form of Shadow Claw. So it's really whichever one you think will be more useful, um, and there's pros and cons to both in all honesty. But again, we're going to be going with Sacred Sword as our coverage move because it's just the best coverage move to run with a ghost type Pokemon that is also a physical attacker. And then for the last move on this set, we can either go with Toxic as a way to status our opponent and slowly drain away our health, or drain away their health, which is going to work amazingly because of this Pokemon's typing in general and its amazing defenses, and also work really well in combination with King's Shield because that acts like Protect, and if they go for an attacking move, you will protect against that, they will take more toxic damage, and then you gain more leftovers recovery, effectively stalling them out. But we could also possibly go with Shadow Sneak in the last option if you did decide to choose Shadow Claw as your main ghost type attacking move on the set, because there is no shame in running two ghost moves, Shadow Claw there for the faster opponents, whereas Shadow Sneak would be there for the opponents that would be in revenge kill range. So both definitely would be a really good move to run on this set, so you could easily run both, but if you want a more defensive stall-y type Aegislash, Toxic is definitely the option to go with. 
But that is it for this video, everybody. So I wanted to thank you all for watching this exhibition on Aegis Slash sets, all five of these, actually. Um, and feel free to obviously follow me on Twitch and on Twitter, and to bookmark the database in the description that will have all these Aegis Slash sets with some written explanations, as well as all the other sets I've been doing in this analysis series and the sets that are to come in the future analysis videos. And also, feel free to join the Zat at zat.com slash pokergrounds. But that is it for this video, everybody. So thank you all for watching. Take care, goodbye, and I will see you all next time.